Today I'm going to be showing you how to create 3D printable mesh in under 10 minutes. First step, open up Blender. Make sure you're working in millimeters. Unit scale looks like this. Next, we'll hide anything we have on our screen. Zoom in, add a mesh that is a plane. The plane is gonna be two millimeters in size. That's gonna be good just to help gauge our point of reference. Next, we wanna hop into edit mode and merge at center. So this step is essentially the building block for our entire mesh structure. So to do that, we're gonna extrude along the Y axis by two millimeters, and we're gonna do this four times. So once we have this laid out in four separate segments, we're gonna to wanna to take the second segment here and we're going to move this along the X axis by five millimeters. And this is essentially the little loop pattern that the uh, nozzle head is gonna follow. So what we wanna do is just recreate this um, and we can do that with an array modifier. And we'll just make sure we're on constant offset on the Y axis. We're gonna make sure we're gonna click merge. And now we can kind of see the pattern the print head is gonna follow. Now, in order to create a 3D printable cylinder, lampshade, you know, whatever the use case is, we wanna make sure that this array is attached to a circle. So to do that, we wanna insert a curve, click back onto our mesh here, and we want to click on the curve modifier, click on our curve we added, change the deform axis to Y, um, but then we'll see we have this area where it's kind of standing on the wrong axes. So we're gonna click back into edit mode, make sure we have all of the mesh selected, and then rotate on the Y axis by 90 degrees. So now we go back into object mode, we're on the correct axes. So what we can do now is go into our array, bump up the count, and this is about as close as we can get without going over. So what I'm gonna do here is take our a circle, and I'm gonna scale it in until these points look real close. I think that's about good enough. Now what we wanna do is apply our modifiers. And at this point we can hide our circle, and then we wanna go into edit mode, and we wanna to go to merge by distance. This will make sure that these two points that were close but not touching, are now touching. Now we can start adding some height to our mesh here. So the best way to do that is just extrude on the Z axis, and I'm gonna do this by 1.2 millimeters, and this will really come into play when we're um, thinking about how we want our 3D print to look. So now we wanna do another modifier, solidify, make this 1.1, even thickness, and we want our offset at zero. And then this is essentially our pattern that the print head is gonna be following. So what we wanna do from here is take our current pattern, duplicate it, and we wanna move it along the Z axis by 2.4 millimeters. This gives us a little bit of room so that we can fill in with some structural pieces. Before we do that though, we wanna take our top pattern, rotate it along the Z axis until they're perfectly crisscrossed. Now, there's probably a way to do this mathematically, but I just like to do it off of vibes. Now, to fill in this piece here with some structure, all we wanna do is add mesh and add a circle, and then we wanna go back in the top-down view and scale this circle up until it looks like it's perfectly in the center of the crisscross. That looks good. We're gonna apply our transform and then what we wanna do from here is move this circle up so that it's on the top surface of our bottom pattern, just like so. Boom, and then what we wanna do from here is go into edit mode, and we want to extrude this along the Z by 1.2. Now we have a nice little bridge between our two orientations. And 
Now we can add the solidify modifier to this one as well. Same as before, and we can just look at this from top down, see if we need to make any adjustments, but that looks good to me. Um, from here, I'm just gonna start applying all the solidifies that we created. And then we wanna create another duplicate. And again, just move this on top. At this point, we're nearly finished. And all we have to do is join our creation here and add an array modifier. Now what we'll do is just add this along the Z axis by 4.8 millimeters. And again, now we can bump up our count and we have our mesh pattern. So what I'm gonna do is bring back the plane so that I can see my 3D printable workspace. And I can just, you know, bump this up too. That looks good. Now you could very easily print it just like this. Um, if you want a very simple lampshade or whatever your use case is going to be. However, there's a really quick and easy way to make this extremely customizable and you can make a bunch of different shapes very quickly. Just go into front facing view, add a lattice. Bring your lattice up so that you are snug around your shape that you created. Make sure you go into all views just to make sure everything looks good. And you want it as close as possible. Then from here, you can bump up your uh, resolution to something like 11 and go back into your mesh, go to modifiers again, and you can do a lattice modifier, select the lattice we want. Now, if we go into our lattice, start selecting some of these vertices and say we want to scale these on the Z axis. Now we have something a little bit more unique, but then we can start getting ready to 3D print this. So what we want to do is do file export as an STL and then import it into your slicer of choice. So I just imported the mesh we are working on into Orca Slicer. Now I'm working inside of a file that I already used, but I thought that would be the easiest way just to show all the settings as quickly as possible. For this example though, we used a layer height of 0.6 millimeters, which will require a little bit bigger of a nozzle size. However, if you wanted to use a smaller nozzle, I'm pretty sure that would work just the same. We have that, uh, turning off detect overhangs, Here's these here. Speed, we really want it to be as slow as possible. And we wanna make sure we're working in vase mode. Other things to note, cooling is where it really matters. So we wanna make sure that we have no cooling and we're moving pretty slow. So what we'll do here is just click slice plate and we'll see this structure will take an hour and 38 minutes to complete. So I'm just gonna print out a little section of this and we will see what happens. All right, it's been a few minutes and this just came off the printer. I will say if you were to go a little bit slower, it may even look better, but you know, play around with the speed, play around the layer height, there's, there's a lot of variance in this. So yeah, I hope this was helpful.